choose a good 3D model for our Mel Pro software, uh, the first thing I like to look at is our coordinate position. So I'm just going to turn the shading off for a second, do a side view here. And you can see we're positioned over the plate, uh, pretty much in the center of the model. Now a coordinate system can be positioned anywhere. It could be on a bore, it could be offset location. Uh, we have a world on model where you can position it top or bottom. We'll use top. You can pick any of the standard locations. We're going to use center. And we're going to write to the stock settings, meaning that EasyCam will size up the 3D preview stock according to the model. Now you can see we're on the top of the part with our coordinate centered in the model. My next step is to go to the wizards and use the 3D machining wizard. And we'll start with a rough work step. You have a few to choose from. You can start with roughing, then go in with smaller tools and re-rough. Same with finishing, you can have a finish work step and then refinish with a smaller tool and pencil milling. We'll start with roughing. We have a couple toolpath types to choose from. We have pocketing which can spiral in or spiral out. Parallel that zigzags and that can be at any angle. And then we do have plunge milling. The path, uh, you can contain the tool path inside of a curve. Or you could just use a surface selection and it knows the boundary of the surface. Now path offset. Uh, we don't have anything in the way on all four sides, so I'm going to say that the tool can over travel by the diameter. Uh, second, half, second path is for bosses. We'll use a flat end mill. We'll go with a three quarter. Now I'm going to change the tools on the fly, speeds and feeds and so forth. Or you could go to a library and select any number of tools designate by flat. You can add your own tools. You could create your own library. The Z step, let's be aggressive. We'll go with half inch. We're using high speed machining. Now the step finish. Now it's not like the step Z where it's going to machine a half inch deep all the way from the outer boundary of the stock. Step finish is going to leave small stair steps, but cut up against the walls. Step over can be percentage or an actual value. Finish allowance will leave 20 thousandths. And our tolerance 0 0.005. So when it looks at the surface itself, it can deviate by 5 thousandths either direction. Then we verify. Okay, at the top you can see there are arcs. That's our high-speed machining at work. Then you see a yellow return. Uh, that is returning at a high feed rate. Uh, maybe think 10 thousandths off the floor. Just a little bit, just enough to skid by. Uh, you can use bidirectional uh, high-speed machining so that you won't have any rapid returns or rapid feed rates. Our next step would be to create a semi-finished work step. Now I could have used the Z step, uh, the step finish, and, have, and could have included it in that work step, but I'm going to use a finish work step. I'll just call this semi. Finishing. We we'll use parallel tool path style, zigzag or around the part. Path offset will say less the diameter. We're not going to drop off the plate. And all end mill. I'll use a half inch. Now I'm not paying attention to tool numbers and RPMs and so forth. I'm going to show you how to adjust that just before you go out to the machine with your code. So for this semi-finish operation, I'm going to leave 20,000, just like we did for the rough, and verify. Now the vertical walls with this type of toolpath were 
pretty much left alone. We could use a constant Z to feed down in the Z axis along the surface, or we could use our wonderful equidistant toolpath, which does not care about what the surface slope is. It'll just change the way that it looks at the surface. So from here, it would look at the sides. We'll demonstrate that in a little bit here. Okay, so now we're ready. Let, let's take a 3D preview. Now I'm using translucent stock. And how did I get there? You go to our stock setup. We could create an uncut solid that's going to compare the toolpath to the model to make sure all aspects of the model have been cut. You could use crash detection so that if you're not wrapping out of your part high enough, it'll detect the crash and stop at that work step. Now we're going to move on to finishing. I want to know what size tool to use, what kind of ball end mill I need to complete the job. So I'm going to go to automation and we're going to use the largest corner radius possible. So let's calculate that. After it's done calculating, we have a maximum or a minimum corner radius of 0 0.063. So I can use a 1 8 tool to cut this model completely. We'll go back to the 3D wizard. I'm going to use the 3D equidistant toolpath, where it doesn't matter what the surface slope is, it's going to cut nice and uniform. I'll drop the end mill just tangent before it comes off the vertical wall. I'll use a ball end mill. Now the smaller the step over, uh, of course there's more lines to calculate, more code, and the smaller the tolerance, the better the part finishes. Okay, look at the toolpath. Now we'll go in with a refinishing toolpath with the 1 8 ball end mill. You have a list of your operations here. You can jump back and go to previous work steps. And we're just going to refinish this work step right here. And we'll make the adjustments on the tool numbers and so on uh, a little bit later here. We'll go with five thousandths for a step over. There's the work of our refinish with our 1 8 end mill. Now a lollipop cutter could probably get in there and do a pretty decent job. But as you can see over here, a lollipop cutter is just not going to reach that area. So we have to do another setup. So let's do that. Let's uh, produce a new coordinate system. But before we do, I'm just going to use default colors. Uh, the windows, as you can see here, look like they were selected surfaces, so it might make it a little difficult to distinguish. Uh, and if I go in to view new coordinate system, and we'll just call this uh, grill, and I try to zoom in, it's a little faint. So let's just go here and go to edit, change color. We'll select Easy Cam's default and click on All. We'll go View World UCS on three points. Down in the lower right, it's asking me to pick the origin. Then it's saying x axis direction. 
and y-axis direction. Top view. Go to our wizard. Now I'm just going to hand pick surfaces. So we'll use select cut surfaces. Actually we want to change our selection there. Okay, we'll do those for example. So I hit enter. And we don't want to violate any of the surrounding surfaces when the ball end mill rolls over. So we're going to go to add check surfaces and select the entire model. The cut surfaces have disappeared so they're not selectable. Now EasyCam knew we were working with the UCS grill as you can see down here in the lower left hand corner. That's the active coordinate system. And let's do our verification. There is our toolpath. Now we'll go in and we'll do a pencil mill operation. Pick pencil mill. Ball end mill. Now we select our surfaces. Now let's see what we get for our toolpath. Okay, but before I go out to the machine or I produce any G code, I'm going to go down a uh, little square down here in the lower left, opens up the work step manager. Slide this up. I've got my tool diameter, which is located next to our tools. And we're going to just change our tool numbers. You can adjust your RPMs, your feed rates, and other attributes of each work step. Whatever I modify here gets updated here in the list box. Now we're ready for a full 3D preview. After we verify all, now we'll take a look at the finished product. The change in tool colors are because it's a change in tool numbers. And here we have our vertical slope where Equidistant is doing a fantastic job of completing. Yeah, that's an outstanding looking part.